For those of you guys that use a Humminbird Helix for your ice fishing unit, I've got a couple quick tips to share with you how I set up my Helix for ice fishing. All right, well, I think the, I think the first and most important thing to do when you're going to use your Hummingbird Helix for ice fishing, go into the menu and disable all of the views that you know you aren't going to use. I'm going to hide side imaging, I'm going to hide down imaging, I'm going to hide any of the split screens that have side imaging and any of the split screens that have down imaging. If we hit menu trice we go into the main menu and then we can scroll across the top using the arrow key to the last box which is views so bird's eye view we want hidden chart bird's eye combo I hide it chart chart combo view I hide it chart view I leave that visible chart down imaging combo view I hide it chart sonar combo I leave that visible chart side, side imaging combo I hide that one down imaging I, 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 I hide that one Downside imaging, I want that hidden. Down imaging sonar combo, I want hidden. Down imaging side sonar combo. Down imaging side imaging and sonar combo, I want that hidden. Side imaging hidden. And I want the sonar view visible. Exit out of that. Now we're left with only a handful of screens to scroll through. So here we have this here we have the regular sonar screen. Next we have the sonar zoom screen. I like that screen. I've left the flasher visible even though I'm not likely to use it. I do want to experiment with the flasher screen a little bit this winter. I have my full screen map. I do find that's a visit that's a I do find it handy to leave the full screen map in there. Here's the map in 2D sonar combo screen. I do like that screen if I'm if I know I'm going to be moving around drilling a bunch of holes, I will leave that screen. I will often just leave that screen. It allows me to punch a hole and quickly just drop the transducer in the water. Um, especially when I'm looking for a brake line or something. So that's a screen that I use a lot. And then we're right back to sonar. So we've gone from more than a dozen screens down to one, two, three, four, five. So we're down to only five screens. At this point it's nice and quick to scroll through your views when you're on the ice. You know, one of the things about one of the things about the Hummingbird Helix series is you push the view button at the top to move forward through the various screens, but the exit button will take you backwards through the screens. So with only five screens left not hidden, we can quickly get to any screen we want to use. That's the number one thing that I, I recommend everybody do to their Humbird Helix if they're going to use it on the ice. Go ahead and hide any screen you're not going to use and that's one less view that you have to flip through when you're ready to use your unit. 
if we go to our sonar screen and we press menu once now we have our sonar menu if we press menu a second time we come to the main screen and if we scroll over to scroll over to sonar which is the second from the left The first option we have is the beam select. So do we want to use the 83 kilohertz cone or the 200 kilohertz cone? Anytime I'm fishing water less than 10 feet deep, I typically select the 83 kilohertz signal. If I'm fishing water deeper than 10 feet, or much deeper than 10 feet I guess I should say, then I select the 200 kilohertz signal. If you're, in, if you're in water that's 12 foot deep, the 200 kilohertz cone is only going to give you a 4 foot circle below your hole. The 83 kilohertz cone is going to give you a 10 to 12 foot circle b below your hole. So if I'm fishing deeper water, I select the 200 kilohertz. If I'm fishing shallow water, I select the 83 kilohertz. I like to leave switch fire in max mode. If I'm finding too much clutter on the screen, then I'll switch that over to clear mode. But I typically start in max mode. Always leave the fish to, always leave your fish ID off. The number one mistake you can make with your sonar is to turn fish ID on. Always turn off your fish ID. Many of the other sonar adjustments boil down to preference. So I'll leave those preference things up to you guys to decide, but I hope these tips have helped you. I hope that you found these tips helpful. Thanks for watching another episode of Team Jesus Outdoors. God bless, tight lines, we'll see you guys on the ice.